Hello. In this particular video, we're going to cover a new library called as SweetWiz. This particular library helps you do exploratory data analysis using Python. Now, the beauty of this particular library is that it creates a self-contained HTML application, which you can then use to look at the exploration that you have created even when your application such as Anaconda Python is closed. Let's get started with some of the examples using SweetWiz. If you want to install it, you can do pip install SweetWiz even within Anaconda. So let's get started with the examples. Now with me, I have two different libraries that I'm going to import the pandas as PD and import SweetWiz. So you don't need to do it as certain things. You can simply directly import SweetWiz here. Now we're going to use the Titanic data set to show the examples of SweetWiz library. Now we're going to take both train and test and see how we can use it to create reports for exploratory data analysis. The three examples that we're going to cover, one is the exploratory data analysis, the default one, then with some configurations, and then third one with comparing values within the same categorical variable. So let's get started. I ran this particular code where I imported both the libraries. I imported the train and test data set of Titanic, and I'm going to have them there. Then I'm going to run train.info to see all the variables that are present in that particular data test. So the next part is obviously creating the EDA report using SweetWiz. So you're going to take SweetWiz.compare and then here we are going to do an example where we are going to compare the train and test data set. So I give the train data set and I give it a name. You can choose whatever you want it. And then you can give the test data set along with the name. Then the third argument takes the dependent variable that you want to use to compare the two different data sets. So we're going to give it that and let's see how it's going to be looking like. So if I run it, it basically goes through all of the variables and does all of the analysis and creates these outputs. And then what you have to do is you have to take this report variable that you created using SweetWiz and then extend it to show HTML and give it a name. Now this name by default will be SweetWiz report. But if you want to give it a custom name, you have to give it something like this. And I gave it Titanic EDA report.html. So if I now run this particular code, so now you can see the result that is generated by the SweetWiz. And let's look at some of the results section by section. So the first section is train and test. You'll see that it gave us the number of rows present in train and test. It also gives us if there are any duplicates, how much size it takes, number of features they have, categorical, numerical, and text variables. And the beauty of this is the associations part. Now, if I just hover over any of the associations, this is for the test associations, and then this is for the train associations. So let's look at the train associations. If you hover over it, it will be looking like here. And there are two different types of associations created here. One. Uh, the square associations are categorical association, which shows the uncertainty coefficient and correlation ratio from zero to one. That's the square that you will uh, observe here. And the second part of it is the Pearson correlations. That is a circle which occurs between two different numerical variables. So this chart is an amalgamation of basically showing relations between numerical variables and also between the categorical variables. Now it does it for both train and test. Now we have to take this with a pinch of salt. It's not something that you want to really rely on, but it's a good step to see and understand what variables are associated with each other. So that's the thing that we are looking at first. And then you can do the same thing and analyze for test also. So that's the first section. Now also you'll notice in the bottom there is some labels here which tells you how much survived values are there within this particular data set. And if it doesn't exist, basically within the test data set, it doesn't show anything. So for now, obviously in test it does not have any uh, survived information. So we're just going to skip it for now. Next, now if you'll see, it gives you the survived section that is the category, uh, that is your dependent variable. And it tells you about how much of them are missing values. There are none missing values here. And then how much percentage of it have survived or not survived. And you can see that 62% have not survived, whereas 38% have survived. 
So it gives you that and obviously on this side here, if, you, if I click on this, it'll, it'll stay. You'll be able to get all the relational information like we saw in the earlier case. Now, if you want to uncheck this and go over to the next analysis, you can simply click on this again and then hover over, over it again. So if I click on it, now this will lock and I can then hover over my mouse to see the output. Obviously passenger ID is something that we don't want to analyze and this will be the next example that I'll show you how you can exclude some of this passenger ID columns. So I'm going to skip this one. I'm going to P class. Now P class is obviously something that is a numerical variable, but you know, in the next step, I'll show you how we can take that numerical variable and force fit to, to be a categorical variable. And it so gives this particular categories that are available, how much percentage have them have survived within them, both within the train and the test data set, right? The blue ones, obviously is the train data set and the test data set is the orange one. And you can see the percentages between all of these three categories are comparable, which is a good thing for us. Now, if I go below, you will see that I have name variable again, it does not really make sense. So we can exclude name variables. Then you have sex variable, which is again a categorical variable and it will show you the information basis, the dependent variable here, which is really cool. And then you have like this age, which is a numerical variable, which has certain extra features. So if I just click on it and lock it, you'll see this particular window locks. Now what I can do is that if, if I click on auto, it's basically doing the binning based on what it thinks is best. But if I click on five, it's going to be doing it on five categories, 15 categories, and then 30 categories, which is going into far more details. But as you can see, it gives you control or good idea on how you can bin the numerical variables to help you support the dependent variable. So really cool feature. I'm just going to leave it at auto and click on it. And you'll see that there are some other numerical variables that are there that are analyzed directly ticket variable as you as we know there are so many different categories and it doesn't really give us so, so much information it has to be taken off and analyzed in a much more different way however this gives a sense of what are the clean numerical and categorical variables that we can already begin with right the ones that are not clean such as name ticket we may have to analyze them later and then we have fair obviously which has some missing values and you can see that test set has one missing value which indicates to us directly here. Similarly, cabin, which is again a categorical variable, you will see that it will help us with the missing value information and the in this missing value information spread between both train and test is literally similar. And then we have again embarked where we have two missing values within the train data set and none within the test data set, which is good. But again, this is a categorical variable and you, and you can basically see some of the survival rates in this chart that is available here, right? So overall, this is how the summary of the sweet viz looks like the basic version of it. Now we can move on to the section where we can configure and exclude some of the variables that we don't want to analyze in this particular round, right? So let's look at how we can do that. Now uh, we're going, we are moving into the second part where we are going to create a feature config and we're going to say sweet viz dot feature config. And then we're going to say skip is equal to passenger ID name. I'm going to skip passenger ID and name for this particular example. And then I'm going to force the ticket variable and P class variable to be categorical variable, right? You can also force some variables to be text by saying force underscore text. These are really the configuration, basic configuration items that you have within SweetWiz. And uh, remember the first one is to skip those variables that you don't want to analyze. Second one is basically the numerical variables are those variables that you really consider them as a categorical variable. And then third one will be the force underscore text, which you can convert that to a text variable. So those are the three categories that you can configure to start off. Now, if I give this configuration, I ran the previous step with this configuration also. However, if you run this particular step and then do the analysis again, you'll see that you'll get some of the output and we're going to name this output to be EDA report underscore two. So let's look at this particular output also. Now, if you look at the output, you will see that basically some of the features that are there within the variables that you don't want to consider will be shown here, right? So you'll see that two skipped. We skipped two different variables and hence it shows two skipped here. And then now we have a clean set of uh, variables that we want to look at or analyze, which is going to be much more helpful while we're doing the analysis, right? So that's the second part of the sweet viz 
library where you are able to basically configure what variables come into that analysis and what are the variables that you can force it to be categorical or a text variable now let's move on to the third part where you can explore the sweet wish to analyze within the categories of a column right such as sex or embarked or p class these are some of the categories that we can analyze and let's look at how that report will look like compared to the ones that we saw by running the comparison between the train and test data set so in this particular example you're going to say my report again i'm i'm going to say compare intra versus compare here right so compare does it between train and test and then compare intra does it between the values within a column right so if i take the train data set i can take the sex variable within train and then i can wherever there is male i can take some of the values and then i can give the names that i want to give it right so male and female that that we have here that will be the names that will be used in the uh, output of the analysis and then we have the survived column i also gave the configuration of the features that we gave in the previous step right so i gave all of that and i run this particular analysis and then generate a third html file which will now be comparing between male and females of the sex variable right so this is a different way than to analyze between train and test and obviously this particular output that you see will be a comparison between male and females right so let's look at one particular category such as this the p class you see there are 577 values in males and 314 within females and, and this is how that the the survival rates of males and females will look like right so if you'll see survival rates of males are quite lower compared to what we have with females even within the classes now if i take that to the age you will see the blue line that is a male the survival rates are very low compared to females and that is true across the age categories also right and similarly let's look at fair as an output click here and say fair similar story let's look at cabin no not cabin cannot be useful let's look at embarked right so embarked also the port of embarkation males have a lower survival rate than females here right so basically the two variants of your sweet ways is basically comparing between your train and test and the other variant is obviously comparing between the intra categories of a particular column now you have to define them as we have defined here you need to know what of the different categories are there within that particular data set i have to still explore how it works for three categories but yeah till now two categories works good that's how sweet ways is useful in terms of doing exploratory data analysis not only between the train and test data set but intra categories of a column so far it looks good and promising because of how it generates a self contained html file which you can then later see or use to analyze your output right i have seen some of the outputs and this is the output that you have even if you close your jupyter notebook and your notebooks python notebook they will still be applicable and you can still run them so that's how sweet wiz works thank you for watching this video guys if you like this video please hit the thumbs up button and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel